All right, this is a story <coughs> about the Rebbe of, um, who was it? I think the after Rebbe, no, no, no. I'll remember in the middle of the story, okay. <coughs> So there was a, 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 man, a man, a poor guy, a poor person from Sons, the Rebbe of Sons. And this story was like a hundred years ago, whatever, in, in Europe. So there was a poor fellow, a poor Jew, and he eked out a living by, uh, he had a, a carriage, a wagon, and he would uh, move things, take people, whatever he could with his wagon. And he eked out a living, a little bit of it. He had a wife, five children, ten children. <clears throat> One thing he did have was he had two nice stories. Two, two nice stories. Two nice horses, horses, beautiful horses, strong horses. That was his pride and joy. With, with that, he made a living. Anyway, one day he was driving his, his, his wagon. This came a tremendous storm, a huge storm. Rain, torrential rain was coming down. It was cold, bitter cold. <clears throat> and he wrapped himself up and, and he could almost not see in front of him. It was so, you know, cold and rainy and foggy. And, and suddenly he hears vaguely through the noise, help, help, itzilu, retavit, retavit. That's in Yiddish, retavit is help. So he drives over and he sees there's somebody stuck in the mud. He grabs a hold of this person. He's a, he was a strong guy. He grabs a hold of this person, pulls him out of the mud, sits him next to him, puts up blankets all over him. And the sooner they get to an inn, whatever it is, he parks his thing, they go inside. And he doesn't know who he saved. It doesn't make any difference to him. He saved it. Suddenly looks, he sees, oh, yeah, we saved the Jew. He says, not only did he save a Jew, he saved the Rebbe of Tzans. I'm almost sure it was the Rebbe of Tzans. He says, oh, a great Rebbe. He says, thank you very much. You saved my life. <clears throat> he said, I want to give you a blessing. I said, okay. He said, uh, have you got anything in your house that's like really valuable? He said, I have my wife, my children, you know. Anything, I want to give a blessing to something that you got. He said, well, I have these two beautiful horses here. You see the horses? I said, oh, good. One of them will be for Purim and one of them will be for Pesach. One for Purim, one for Passover. So he said, oh, thank you, Rebbe, thank you. And he, you know, and he goes home to his wife. He says, you won't believe what happened. I said, oh, I was his wife. I was so worried about you. You know, there was the big storm. He said, no, you know, what a blessing. I was driving and I saw someone was stuck in the mud. And I pulled the person out and I took him into the inn, you know, and we warmed him up. And what is it? It was a Jew. It was the Rebbe of the sons, the Rebbe. He said, oh, the Rebbe of sons. And he gave me a blessing. Oh, this is wonderful blessing. He said, with the two horses, one for Purim and one for Passover. His wife said, oh, that's just wonderful. One for Purim and one for Passover. Yes, I'm so happy. His wife said, well, what does it mean, one for Purim? He said, I don't know. I have no idea what it, I don't know what it means, but I mean, it's a blessing. It must mean something. <clears throat> Good. So it comes about uh, two weeks before Purim, and his wife goes out to feed the horses. And she goes and she finds there's a, one of them is black, one of them is white. She sees the black horse is laying on its back, dead. Dead? So she comes back to her husband and she's got this worried look on her face. She said, what, uh, what's, what's worried? So, well, you know, the black horse, yes. He says, well, it's like, you know, it's sort of laying on its back and one leg is like this and the other leg is like that. And, and, and there's one eye is facing here and one eye is facing over there and his mouth is open, his tongue. So what? It's dead? He said, listen, you said it. I didn't say it. It's dead. So he said, okay, the horse is dead. What are we going to do? He said, listen, we'll make the best out of it. Thank God we still have one horse. <clears throat> I'll sell the horse. Sell the horse. We can sell the meat for, for dog meat and sell the skin, the, the tail, maybe this. So he goes, he looks for people. He sells the horse for whatever he can get for it. And with that money, he gives to the, the poor. It makes a nice, beautiful, poor meal invites all the poor people that he knows, festive, happy meal, at least people will be happy one day a year. And the money he's got left over, he gives to charity, his wife is very happy, everybody's happy, and he still has his one horse, 
for, for a month time comes is going to come uh, a Purim, a pay, 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 Passover. So a couple of weeks before Passover, his wife goes out into the, this, and she finds the white horse is also dead. Comes back in, she says, the white horse. So what's wrong? Said, well, you know, it's laying on its side. One eye is like this, like the other one is dead. Yep, dead. So now he already knows a little bit what the, how to sell. So he sells the, the white horse also. And he makes a little more money because now, you know, he knows how to make a deal. He knows about how much they're worth. And with that money, so he gives to the poor for Passover. He makes a beautiful Passover meal, invites everybody else. But now Passover is finished. The holiday was wonderful, but he's got nothing left. So his wife says, what are we going to do? So he said, listen, we have to be happy. The Rebbe gave us a blessing. The blessing, she said, listen, you know, it's a blessing, but the two horses died. You know, we don't have any, any way of, she says, listen, I'll go and look for work. I'll look for work, maybe something. So he looked in the city, in the town where he was, there was no work. And so he took a, a loaf of bread and he started walking, started walking. All the little bit of money that he had left over, he gave to his wife, for his wife and his kids that they had food to eat. And he started walking. So he's walking, walking. And as he's walking a couple of days, he comes to this inn. He sits in the corner of the inn. He asks the innkeeper, you know, do you have any work over here? Do you have this? The innkeeper says, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe I need somebody to sweep up the floor or something like that. You can sit, you know, sit there. So he sits in the corner of this inn and he hears there's these two Gentiles, these two non-Jews that are sitting and they're screaming, yelling at each other, yelling at each other. That man is insane. That man is just a maniac. If I could, I would kill him, but he's going to kill us both. What are we going to do? I don't know what to say. I don't where are we going to find a manager? Where are we going to find a manager? That guy is crazy. Everything we do. It. And so he can't help notice that these two people are yelling and screaming. So he walks over to them and he says, uh, excuse me, can I ask, you know, I don't want to butt in, but maybe I can help or something. He says, yeah, maybe you can help. You know, a Jew, a Jew, you're going to help us. Oh, so well, what's the problem? He said, what's the problem? He said, we have a boss, you know, the 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 what the, the baron, the baron, you know, that owns all the lands over the shore. He said, Well, he's a maniac. He's a maniac. We bring in managers to manage the lands, and he throws the managers out, he gets mad at them, and, and we're supposed to be the ones that go and look for the manager. We have to find them. And everyone we find, he rejects him for some reason or other. This one's too tall, he's too short, he's too stupid, he's too smart, he's too what too loud, he's too whatever quiet. Everything and, and he beats us. He beats us every time he, he he gets rid of one of the managers, and we don't know what to do. There's already been like five managers in the last month, and he gets rid of all of them. And he used to manage it all himself. But what are we gonna do? So the Jew says, Well, listen, maybe I could be the manager. And they looked at him and said, You'll be the manager. Are you nuts? You're crazy. This guy, he hates everybody, but Jews. He hates them every five words. He says, "You, the worst curse you can say, you dirty Jew. Everybody calls it the worst curse you can have. Jews, he hates Jews. The thought of a Jew, I'm going to say, listen, what do you got to lose? You have nobody else. You just say, that, tell him that this maniac said that he can be a manager. And we told him no, but he insisted. Tell, put it all on me. So are you sure you want to do this? I mean, this Baron, he's like really wicked, you know, is it? So listen, we'll see. God will help. <clears throat> so he, they take, okay, they take him to the manager. Manager, the, 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 the Baron, they take him to the Baron. Said, Baron, look at this, this Jew, he, he, he's, he's, he, he foisted himself on us. He won't leave us alone. We told him he can't be a manager. He says he wants to get an interview to be a manager. We told him it's not going to work. It's not going to work. The, the Baron looks up. He says, you brought me a Jew? You brought me a Jew? And this Jew, he says, what would you rather, that they bring you a fish? The Baron says, a fish. <laughs> what a joke! Ah! These two fellows are looking at each other. They can't figure what's going on. So that's a great joke. Oh, 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 I haven't laughed. I haven't laughed so hard in the last 10 years. That's really a that's really a fantastic joke. I do. Where did you get that joke from? Says, Where did I get the joke from? I got it from the moon. Says, ah, from the moon. Ah. 
Lutz says, wow, I really like you. You know, you're, oh, you make me laugh. He says, didn't, what did he say? Didn't that, all of a sudden fell into his mind to say these things. And the, the Baron loves him. He loves him. He says, you know what? I hate Jews, but I like you. I'm going to give you a chance. You know what? I'm going to give you a chance. Here, these two guys will tell you what to do. And you, let's see if you can be a manager. So this, our, our guy, he starts to manage. He hears, all of a sudden falls into his mind. He's never been a manager in his life. Falls into his mind. And he's a nice person. Everybody gets along with him. He gets along with everybody. He tells everybody what to do, what the best way to do. The Baron is happy. Everyone is happy. The Baron says, listen, I, fact is, I hate the Jews and I never even talk to a Jew. I don't even know what a Jew is. If the Jews are anything like you, then they're okay. You know what? You can invite all of your friends over here. I'll do anything you want. He builds a big synagogue. It becomes a big successful place. And this is two years later. He sees the Rebbe from Sanz. He says, oh, Rebbe, that blessing that you gave, it's wonderful. He says, sure, I heard your name. Everything. He said, that's what I meant. One for Passover, one for Purim and one for Passover. If you would have kept those horses, then you would have been a wagon driver, a successful wagon driver. But now you got rid of the horses that you thought that was your limit for success. Is that opened up the doors for all the blessings that God could send you. And that's why I blessed you that your two horses would die. You thought it was the worst thing in the world, but really it was the best thing for you. It opened up a door for infinite blessing. And so it is with us, the exile, this terrible exile that we're in for the last 2000 years, it's really opening the door for tremendous blessings which should happen any moment with Mashiach now. Have a good Shabbos, everyone. God bless you all.